on to the next phylum that is Annelida. Annelida are represented by earthworm that is very well known to you. Earthworm, we have the leech and we also have nearies. These are free living. Sometimes they could be parasitic. They are present both in land as well as in water. So they are both aquatic and terrestrial. For example, earthworm and leech are found on land or present in the soil, whereas nearies is an example for a aquatic animal belonging to Annelida. The main characteristic feature of Annelida is the segmentation of the body called as metamerism. So the entire body, for example earthworm if you observe, it is divided into distinct parts called as segments or metamers. This phenomenon is called as metamerism. Each segment contains certain organs. So metamerism is seen. So the body, if you see on the outside, it is appears as ring-like structures, annulus, meaning rings or segments. Therefore, it gets the name annelida because the body is divided into segments. For the first time, we can see organ system level of body organization. They exhibit triploblasticity. These are bilateral animals and for the first time in Kingdom Animalia, we find a true coelom. These are coelomates in Annelida. We find coelom for the first time. The there are specialized organs called as parapodia present as lateral appendages in nearies because it is present in water it has to move so the parapodia will help in the locomotion of nearies the digestive system and excretor system we have nephridia which helps in excretion and osmoregulation so waste is thrown out through organs called as nephridia through nephridio pores the skin or the outer body has numerous pores called as nephridio pores through which waste is thrown out the digestion is complete meaning food enters through the mouth and waste is thrown out through the anus. So there are two openings in the alimentary canal, mouth and anus. So digestive system is complete. And the respiration, it takes place through moist skin. So respiration is cutaneous through the skin. There are certain mucus glands which produce mucus so that the skin remains moist which will help in respiration. So moist skin will help in respiration. When it comes to reproduction, earthworm and leech, they are hermaphrodites or bisexual whereas nearis is unisexual that is in earthworm and in leech both male and female reproductive organs that is the testis and the ovary are present in the same organism that is hermaphrodite bisexual whereas in nearis there is a separate male and there is a separate female 
फर्टिलाइजेशन इज इंटरनल डेवलपमेंट इज डायरेक्ट सो दैट इज अबाउट द फाइलम एन लीडर इट इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय बॉडी सेगमेंटेशन मेटामेरिज्म एंड इट शोस ए ट्रू सीलोम फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम moving to the next phylum arthropoda it is the largest animal phylum almost 2/3 of the animals are present in this phylum arthropoda so examples of arthropoda includes your insects so the class insecta is coming under arthropoda all insects house fly butterfly mosquito spider all different types of insects are found under arthropoda the prawn and crab scorpion etc are examples so these are present in water or they are present on land so they are aquatic mostly fresh water sometimes marine and also present on the land the important feature is that the animals they exhibit a exoskeleton which is made up of a tough substance called as chitin so there is a chitinous exoskeleton this should not be confused with the shell shell is made up of calcium carbonate which is hard whereas this is a exoskeleton made up of chitin which protects them the organisms they get the name arthropoda because of joint feet poda or podos means feet arthros means jointed so if you observe the ventral portion the stomach portion of these animals the insects or the prawn or the crab you will find that there are two legs which are jointed so we will usually find three pairs of jointed legs two in the front two near the abdomen and two near the tail portion so total three pairs of jointed legs is exhibited that is why they get the name arthropoda jointed legs these are also triploblastic exhibiting bilateral symmetry and coelom is present the digestive system is complete body is divided into distinct segments so segmentation is seen there is a head there is a trunk and then there is a abdomen very clear distinctions are seen and each segment it has certain important organs talking about circulation they have a open circulation that is blood is not carried by blood vessels instead blood it will bath all the tissues and organs so open type of circulation is seen blood does not contain hemoglobin so the color of the blood is white for respiration these animals have book lungs they have gills trachea so different structures are present gills book gills book lungs trachea all these are the different respiratory organs that are seen for excretion they have malpighian 
tubules which will help in both excretion as well as osmo regulation the reproduction is sexual that is two parents are present there is a separate male and there is a separate female mostly these are oviparous animals that is they lay eggs observe a butterfly or a mosquito or a crab or prawn so these are mostly oviparous they lay eggs these eggs then hatch out and new organisms come so once again development is indirect they show metamorphosis very distinct metamorphosis is seen that is the larval form and the adult form are completely different if you observe the life cycle of a butterfly butterfly lays eggs which will then convert into a cocoon and this produces a caterpillar stage and then finally the moth or the adult stage so the caterpillar stage is completely different the cocoon stage is completely different and the adult stage is completely different so extended or advanced metamorphosis is seen in the phylum arthropoda this phylum is economically very very important because they are a source of food for human beings they are also commercially exploited to get for example silk worm from the silk worm we get silk insects are very important for pollination that is the transfer of pollen grain from one plant to another plant that is how the grains cereals etc are grown so economically very very important for food for commercial utilization and for pollination moving on to the next phylum that is mollusca these are the second largest group of animals after arthropoda arthropoda is the largest phylum in animal kingdom followed by mollusca these are soft bodied animals soft bodies and the soft body is covered by a outer shell which is made up of calcium carbonate this calcium carbonate shell offers protection to the internal soft body body is not segmented segmentation is absent in mollusca but inside the hard calcium carbonate shell the body could be divided into a small head portion and we have a visceral hump and we have a foot like portion the visceral hump portion it has a specialized rasping organ called as the radula which acts like a mouth so the radula is a feeding organ so that is a specialized organ radula coming to the examples of course that is your snail and octopus which are all soft boiled animals squid the pearl oyster shell fish cuttle fish all these are examples for mollusca shrimp etc all will be examples for phylum mollusca so sexual reproduction these are unisexual there is a separate male and a female and most of them are egg laying animals these are also oviparous fertilization is external development is direct so these are oviparous animals the second largest phylum moving on to echinodermata echinodermata are mostly marine aquatic and 
melanin. Example, we can give starfish asterias. Starfish sea cucumber. It is cucumia. Brittle star. Etc. All these are examples for echinodermata. The word echinodermata it represents derma means skin, echino means spine. So the entire body of, for example, starfish. If you see, it is covered by small spine-like, thorn-like structures. So the spiny skinned animals. That is echinodermata. The most important feature of Echinodermata is their water vascular system. This water vascular system is important for digestion, movement of water and food inside the body. It also helps in respiration and maintenance of osmoregulation. So this water vascular system is a key feature of phylum Echinodermata. As compared to this, Porifera have what is called as a water canal system which is also responsible for movement of water, food and transportation. So water canal system and water vascular system in echinodermata of course they have organ system level of classification these are also triploblastic and they exhibit radial symmetry whereas in the larval stages when they are young they exhibit bilateral symmetry Silom is present of course digestion, circulation etc all are present reproduction is sexual reproduction is seen sometimes they also show asexual reproduction in the form of regeneration for example star fish it can regrow its body parts so sexual reproduction is seen sexes are separate fertilization is internal and development is direct so it is represented by the starfish the sea cucumber the brittle star etc now previously the next phylum hemichordata was placed under chordata as i already told you but these organisms are different from chordata so now they are placed into a separate phylum hemi means partial or half they have some resemblance to organisms of chordata so if you look at the diagram in the textbook the body of hemichordata is like a worm so these are worm like animals the body is distinctly divided into a anterior proboscis which acts like the mouth as well as it has certain glands which will help in sensing the environment so that is the proboscis the proboscis is followed by a middle collar region and at the end of the collar we find a long trunk so the body is divided into proboscis collar and trunk these are mostly aquatic organisms maybe possibly parasites also living on other animals worm like animals example balanoglossus and sacoglossus are examples for 
balanoglossus and sacco glossus are the animals the resemblance to chordata comes from the fact that if you take a cross section of the collar region as you can see in the diagram in the textbook inside the collar region there is a rod like structure called as the stomochord which is something similar to the notochord that is present in the chordata so but stomochord is very primitive because of this it was placed in chordata this also have organ system they are also triploblastic with bilateral symmetry coelom is present all these are present and complete the digestive system respiratory system circulatory system etc are completely present the reproduction is by sexual means this hemichordata balanus glossus and sacoglossus are almost thought to be fossils because in the current day the specimens for this phylum are not to be found so these are fossil evidences have helped us to identify this particular phylum moving on to the last phylum about which we will study in detail in the next video is the chordata the chordata is different from these organisms due to the presence of a notochord we saw in the last video notochord is one of the important basis for classification of animals the notochord as you know is a rod like structure seen on the dorsal portion that is the back portion of certain group of animals animals belonging to phylum porifera cnidaria tinophora platyhelminthes nematoda annelida arthropoda mollusca and echinodermata these do not have a notochord on the dorsal side notochord is absent therefore we can call these animals from porifera up to echinodermata as non chordata any chordata it has got a stomochord but it is not a true notochord and animals that have a notochord they are classified as phylum chordata so non chordata and chordata chordata of course they have all these features that we see coelom is present they have digestive system circulatory system excretory system and the nervous system and also they have the neural system which is well developed reproduction is mostly sexual and fertilization could be internal or external development is direct these could be oviparous or viviparous they could either lay eggs or they can directly give birth to the young ones they are both aquatic as well as terrestrial it is a huge phylum so we will discuss in detail now other than the presence of notochord this is the main difference between chordata and non chordata there are other features in organisms belonging to phylum chordata so if you make a side by side comparison of the differences between chordata and non chordata you would observe that in chordata they have a dorsal notochord they also have a dorsal hollow nerve cord 
the heart is ventral in position and the gills are perforated so you can find perforated pharyngeal gill slits just behind the mouth so presence of pharyngeal gill slits is seen in chordata and there is usually a post anal tail that is present whereas all the structures are absent in non chordata in non chordata post anal tail is absent gill slits are absent heart is absent if heart is present it is seen on the dorsal side not on the ventral side and notochord is absent that is the basis for classifying the animals into non chordata and chordata let us now discuss the sub phylums under chordata chordata is further classified into three sub phylums and let us talk in detail about it thank you